Hello everyone, back to you into today's video, it's January Friday, so as always on a Friday we're going to have a look at the weather for the month ahead with the long range Japanese and CFS V2 models, and this will take us into the second half of uh, May. So we started this spring on a really, really cold note back in uh, the beginning of March, we had our coldest um, days uh, in spring on record on the first day of uh, March, and uh, that car weather was pretty brutal indeed, but it's totally flipped around in April, and uh, yesterday we had our warmest April day for 70 years, and came very, very close to actually smashing the uh, April maximum temperature record, which was set in 1949, it was about 0.4 of a degree away from it, so obviously big um, changes this spring and we'll see what the final month of the spring has in, uh, has in store for us um, with Jamie Friday today. We'll have a look at Japanese model first of all and then we'll have a look at CFS V2. We'll compare the two models and see what the uh, general idea is going into the second half uh, of May. Just so I think we'll update Stormwatch for you again this evening. There could be some thunderstorms coming up over the weekend, and I'll bring you up to date with all, the, all of the latest on that. Probably around 7 o'clock, that sort of time, this evening. But we'll begin uh, today's video with uh, the Japanese long-range uh, lockheads. So these are 500 mm of our height anomalies broken down into weekly peers from the JMA, from the North Pole, uh, down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. Mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere around there and the British Isles is uh, just there. These are 500 mm our height, so we've broken down to week periods. The first week period will take us from today, the 20th, through to the 27th of uh, April. So, uh, brighter colours, yellow and orange extrapolate to high pressure, blues extrapolate to low pressure, and we find that we've got an area of above average heights in the week ahead uh, to the south of the British Isles, with below average heights up to the north, and this is bringing the jet stream uh, and the flow in from off the Atlantic, rather like that. So, it's a classic westerly setup that we've got low pressure to the north, got high pressure to the south, consequently, the north will get the wettest of the weather, the south will get the driest of the conditions on offer. This is how week two is looking. This is taking us from the 27th of April through to the 4th of May. This is looking um, rather more unsettled with that area of below average heights moving into the country from the northwest. The above average heights look like they're pulling out into the central part of the Atlantic. And so that sends the jet stream on that sort of uh, track. So the jet stream goes a little bit to the south of the uh, country. And so probably quite cool there and also fairly unsettled as well. So the end of April, start of May uh, goes into an, a more unsettled uh, sort of phase. And then we go through to weeks three and four. This takes us from the 4th of May through to the 18th, so into the second half of the final month of the spring of 2018 and we have below average heights then to our west with above average heights seemingly building up to our east so that will send the flow and the jet uh, rather like that and uh, I think we'll be pulling up some warmer air from the south again so that could be quite nice actually going into further into May we may start off uh, the month of May on a rather unsettled note with a few showy bursts of rain. But as we go further into it, that implies that pressure should be starting to rise up a bit to our east and northeast. With low pressure stalling in the middle of the Atlantic, it could start to pull up some warmer air uh, from the south uh, once again. Let's see if my interpretation is correct by having a look at the tropical and mid latitude view in terms of the temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So on this view, we've got the equator of the Earth uh, just there. The Northern Hemisphere uh, is there. Of course, the Southern Hemisphere is down here on the southern side of the equator. But British Charles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. And Europe is over here in the far top uh, left-hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. A reminder of the week one 500 millibar height anomaly with the above average heights to the south and the below average heights 
uh, up to the north and bringing the flow and the jet stream through uh, rather like that. Temperature anomalies in the weekend are still coming out pretty warm, actually. Maybe a little bit surprisingly so, given it's a fairly flat westerly setup. Um, so, warmer than average temp temperature anomalies. Bearing in mind, this does encompass the very warm period that we're in right now and will stay in until at least the end of the weekend. So, I suppose it's not that surprising, actually, that the temperature anomaly should be above average. So, warmer than average temperature anomaly for the weekend from the 20th through to the 27th. 7th of April, and uh, not too bad precipitation-wise either, a little bit wetter than average for the far north of the country, elsewhere actually a little bit on the drier than average side, so a nice week to start us off. Then we go through to week two, which is the 27th of April through to the 4th of May, uh, and we have below average heights then just pushing down through the country, about above average heights region pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic, and that sends the flow and the jet stream onto that sort of track. It looks like it should be a cooler and more unsettled period. Temperature anomalies are going below average then uh, for the very end of April and into the start of May. So it certainly is a substantially cooler uh, period. Not overly unsettled still. A little bit wetter than average for the north and west of the country, but perhaps a little bit on the drier and average side elsewhere. So although the it looked like the below average heights were extending down across the country, actually not overly unsettled, nothing overly alarming, just turning a little bit more changeable and certainly uh, cooler. And then we go through to week three and four, takes us from the 4th through to the 18th of May, uh, and uh, then we've got the below average heights out in the middle of the Atlantic, just there, above average heights, high pressure building to the east. We can't see Scandinavia on this view, but we know from looking at the north pole view down that there is an area of above average heights, high pressure developing over Scandinavia as well. It looked like the jet stream should be pushing back to the north of the country in that sort of direction. Uh, so temperature anomalies are recovering. They're still not anything to get overly excited about, but they are uh, going a little bit above average overall. They're certainly not as cool as they are in uh, week two. Bear in mind, this is a two-weekly anomaly, week three and four, so it might be transition. It might be something like uh, week three could be rather cool, for example, and then week four might have a heat wave. And so offsetting one another, uh, we come out with that sort of near normal temperature anomaly. You always have to keep that at the back of your mind when you're talking about uh, uh, an anomaly that's beyond sort of a one-week period. A one-week anomaly is always quite straightforward. But beyond that, if it's a two-week or a three-week or even a four-weekly anomaly, uh, then you have to bear in mind there will be deviations from uh, what the uh, anomaly is overall for the period that you're defining. Uh, then we go through to precipitation, and uh, that looks a little bit wetter than average for the north and west of the country, but drier than average for the south. So it does look as though we're in for a relatively dry uh, month, actually, after all of the rain and snow uh, and uh, whatnot that we've had. Uh, through the early part of this spring, it looks like going to a drier phase. And temperatures, they're starting very warm. They're probably going to recover a bit as we get further into May. But between uh, now and then, uh, maybe going a bit cooler right at the very end of April into the start of May. That's how the JMA is looking. What about the Synth SV2? So again, these are 500 millibar heights. They're broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 20th through to the 26th of April. And it's a very good representation for the week ahead compared to what the uh, JMA is showing. So we've got the above average heights uh, to our south, a nice ridge to the south of the country with below average heights up to the north and bringing a flat uh, westerly flow through rather like that or maybe a little bit like that. So the south gets the driest of the weather, the north gets the most unsettled uh, weather, and obviously, because it's a westerly flow, temperatures do cool a bit compared to the heat that we've had recently, but still very pleasant uh, conditions. We go through to week two. This is a change compared to what the JMA is showing from as early as just two weeks out. This is 27th of April through to the 3rd of May. And this is when the JMA wants to push down that trough from the northwest and take the ridge out into the middle of the Atlantic. The CFS, however, just has this ridge of above average heights over and to the south southeast of the country. So that looks really very nice indeed. Below average heights up to the north and uh, down to the southwest as well. 
And so what this would do, the main jet stream would be up here uh, and we'd be pulling the wind up from a southerly southeasterly uh, direction. So that's uh, pretty warm conditions continuing into the very end of April and the start of May in contrast to what the uh, JMA is showing for that second week. Then we go through to week three, which is the fourth through to the tenth of May, with below average heights again up to the north northwest. We are getting some blocking appearing over Greenland, but uh, we're holding it off because we've still got this area of above average heights to our south. So this keeps things reasonably mild, uh, probably quite warm, with the air again continuing to come in from a south to southwesterly direction. And then we go through to week four, which is the 11th to the 17th of May. Again, we've got this area of above average heights to our south, southeast, below average heights now to the northwest. We're bringing the flow and the jet through like that. So, a little bit more unsettled for the north and west. But again, nothing overly alarming. And for southern parts of the country, probably a continuation of very pleasant weather with quite warm conditions expected in that kind of setup, I would have thought. Temperature anomalies, CFS V2, for the coming week, the 20th. 26th of April are coming out substantially warmer than average for the UK and for most of Europe as well. We go through to week two, which is the 27th of April through to the 3rd of May. It's still a bit on the warm and average side. It's not as warm as it will be in the coming week, but nevertheless, still slightly above average temperatures, especially so for some parts, actually most parts of Europe, still looking very warm as well. Uh, week three, temperature anomalies look like that. So close to average, a little bit above average down in the south of the country, most parts of Europe again, coming out uh, warmer than average in week three. And then week four, it's going a bit colder than average in this last week for Scotland and Northern Ireland, but for England and Wales, still coming out a bit above average with the temperatures, and most parts of Europe coming out above average with the temperature as well. So a relatively uh, mild month ahead uh, with the CFS V2. Precipitation anomalies finally, so the week ahead is coming out uh, close to average with precipitation, really a little bit drier and average down in the far south western part of the country. Week two precipitation anomalies again close to average or a little bit drier than average, particularly so uh, in the south. Week three precipitation anomalies are close to average, maybe hinting at being a bit wetter than average for the far north of Scotland. And then week four, the 11th to the 17th of May, that one does look a little bit more unsettled. So by the middle of May, we're possibly looking at something a bit cooler and a bit more unsettled reading uh, between the lines here, particularly so, but not exclusively for the north and western part of the country. Overall, I don't think this is too bad an update, to be honest. It looks like there's nothing to be overly concerned about now as we're going into the final stages of April and through to May. Temperatures look like they're holding up relatively well, probably not as hot as we've had it over the past few days, mind you. Um, the heat we had yesterday was very extreme for April, so I don't think we'll be going back to that level of uh, hot weather in the foreseeable future. But overall, temperatures do appear to be holding up reasonably OK, especially so uh, for the south. And uh, generally, it looks like reasonably dryish conditions, particularly for England and Wales. Some rain at times, of course, and that's most likely up in the north. But again, nothing too concerning here. So now we've got that frozen march out of... Well, it wasn't really a frozen march, but now we've got the cold march out of the way. Uh, and the uh, chilly start to April. It looks like we are now firmly off and running into spring and early summer weather. And there's no sign of any shocks here, uh, which I suppose is the main thing if you're a grower or a farmer. There's no sign of any cold shocks returning um, for the rest of April and into uh, May. Bear in mind, these are experimental long-range models, so they are prone to chopping and changing. It could look different next week, but a reasonably... If you're waiting for uh, a protracted run of spring weather, it looks like we've got reasonably uh, decent-looking models for JMA Friday this week. Right, we get forecast coming up tomorrow, and we'll have the ENSO update uh, for April as well. That'll be with you 
uh, tomorrow. This evening, we're going to do storm watch because there could be some uh, sh- heavy showers and uh, storms coming up over the weekend. So come back for that this evening. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.